we're doing here is demonstrating a typical brightness range. This TV is in this room that's not overly bright, but you know, the picture is be decently viewable. Here's the brightness range maxed out. You can start to see the blacks are getting washed out a little bit. You don't notice that so much when you don't have that format. It doesn't notice it, but anyway, if you adjust it so that you have a nice black here, there's the there's the uh, total brightness. I think it looks pretty good. And if I turn a little bit more, I mean that's about as low as anybody could stand to look at. It, I would think. And let's see. I want to see how much it takes to completely cut it off barely see I mean nobody's watching it at that level so this is basically useless I would say the bare minimum would be about right there okay and you notice how much I'm turning the brightness that's you know maybe about a quarter of a turn of the pot of useful range I mean here it's essentially blacked out. Six weeks. If you don't see incredible results, we'll give and I have almost half the range there available. So clearly the brightness pot has a fairly narrow range of operation. My guess on that is it's just to accommodate different CRTs and different setups. It's not supposed to be some perfectly calibrated device that goes from correct viewing level max brightness to correct viewing level lowest brightness that's acceptable to every user. So you got to kind of think about that when you're setting these things up. They're not going to be, and, and each one will be different depending on the quality of the CRT. This CRT tests okay once it warms up, but when it's uh, first started the, the emissions are pretty low. So what that tells me it's a CRT that's got some time on it. Still produces a good picture but not perfect. I'm waiting for the show to come back on so we can see a full screen and we'll be able to look at the brightness without having to worry about the black level here. Anyway, so the next thing we're going to be doing after we do this video is I'm going to be removing the back. I'm going to leave the setting just where it is right now, which is a nice viewable level. Here, let me see. Right where I typically watch it, which is right about there. And I'll, I'll see what the pin voltages are. Here now we have a full screen, so that's max brightness. And you'll notice here, I'm going to pull the color down, so it's a black and white. That's a grayscale picture. Then as I decrease the brightness, if you have it set up right, that black and white picture doesn't take on any particular tint. And this one doesn't. I mean, it's not red or blue or green. As you increase the brightness, it just kind of washes itself out. It might have a tiny bit of green there, a tiny bit of green tinge. And that's that essentially has to do with the tracking level. I'll put the color back up. That has to do with the tracking of the CRT and how well the three guns track. Um, if you have poor tracking, you can never get that to work perfect, so you pretty much have to just get a compromised setting of the uh, screen grids and the, and the CRT drives. For the particular brightness that you like to watch. But like I said, this is just the first part of the series. The next part will be showing the actual pin voltages that the CRT has seen. Oh, and I'll do one more thing. Here's what the, here's what the raster, the brightness of the raster. Okay. Here's a full brightness raster. And we'll turn the brightness down and the raster until it completely goes away. Right there. Which is probably from the lowest setting. I'm going to rotate this. There, now it's starting to come up. So you get an idea of just how how effective that brightness range is. Perhaps if the pot was a lower overall value, you could maybe tweak this to work right. But I mean, again, I think they set them up so that the CRTs can be so this controller can be set to work with a variety of CT CRTs that have a variety of age and emission levels. More later.